Hello. In this video we're going to take the example of a molar tooth and the analysis of the pulp canal, the dentin and the enamel of the tooth as a way of illustrating some of the custom processing and special logic and image processing functions in Skyscan CT Analyzer. Here is the dataset of a tooth. It's been resized downwards from its original resolution to facilitate a fast demonstration. Now at the top we can see a rather spectacular caries. Um, for the sake of this demonstration we're going to begin at a point in the uh, where the pulp cavity begins and excluding the, uh, the region at the top of the caries uh, lesion. Now first let's go to the binary images page and depending on the cross-section we're at we can see a histogram by alternating from linear to logarithmic of the different density phases present. Here we can see clearly the enamel and the dentin representing different density phases. A threshold value of something like 37 will binarize the, both the enamel and the dentin structures, whereas a higher threshold of let's say 85 would binarize the enamel structures. We're going to move now to the fifth page in CT Analyzer, the custom processing page. We've skipped the fourth uh, an analysis page in this example. So let's begin by looking at how to binarize the pulp cavity specifically within the tooth. Let's say we want to make an analysis of the pulp cavity but setting the tooth out a boundary as our volume of interest. To do that we begin with thresholding and we will apply a threshold of 37 with a maximum of 255 using global thresholding. Now in part of this data set the uh, pulp cavity is full of various uh, objects that we can see in the raw images page. Now to, to uh, facilitate the analysis we can remove some of these by first running a morphological operation such as an open procedure in three dimensions with a radius of four. Now open basically means erode followed by dilate and it has the effect of removing any linkages or any structures that are less than essentially twice the value that you choose, i.e. less than eight uh, pixels. We'll apply it in three dimensions and run the operation. This operation takes more time depending on uh, the power of your computer and also the uh, radius that you set. Also 3D procedures take longer than 2D. But this is already complete and you can see that it will dramatically reduce the number of these structures. Not completely remove them because some of them are connected to the side of the, uh, the tooth and if we take two extreme measures to try and remove these objects we might damage some other parts of the tooth like the tips of the roots so we will leave some of them in place. Our next procedure will be a despeckle operation. We will apply an operation called sweep in three dimensions. This will remove every object that is not connected to the main object. Now the tooth is an integral structure so every structure that we want to analyze is, is, is interconnected. So if we run sweep it will have the effect of removing one or two of these um, structures within the pulp cavity. Compare that to the binary image and we can, you can see that we've lost quite a lot of those objects. So now we're going to proceed. How do we then make a binary model of the pulp cavity? We can follow the pulp cavity from the top. Below the crown it joins into a single object and then it later on divides into two as the roots begin to separate and then f further than that it will divide into say three roots and we can follow those um, pulp canals all the way down to the tips of the roots. Now in any analysis in CT Analyzer a very important starting point is the volume of interest. What is the region of interest or we, as we call the volume of interest over the whole data set? At the region of interest page we have not defined any region of interest. So in custom processing we can use the final three buttons here, these three, to show what the current image is 
and the right hand button to show what the current VOI is. At the moment it's a solid white square because the default of VOI is the whole image. The middle button is the image inside the VOI. Now, one of our bitwise operations, or logical operations, is the operation copy. And copy allows us to make the region of interest simply a copy of the image. We run this operation, and now the region of interest and the image are the same. Now why do we do this? Well, this allows us to then allow the outer boundary of the tooth to be the boundary of our volume of interest. However, the region of interest still contains the pore in the middle, but we can remove that by now running the despeckle operation and we re use the operation remove pores. And we're going to remove pores, apply this to the region of interest and not to the image. This is an important point. Many of these functions can be applied either to the image or to the region of interest, which can be considered as parallel data sets. Now, it makes a big difference whether you choose 2D or 3D. Let's see what happens if we remove pores in 3D space. Well, the answer is essentially that we'll see what happens when it finishes. Nothing happens. No, none of these pores have been removed, either from the image or from the region of interest. And the region, reason, reason for that is that um, this space here might seem to us like a pore, but because in three dimensions it's connected to the outside, where the roots terminate, then as far as the software is concerned, in three dimensions this is not a pore. This is part of the outside space. So it's not removed if despeckle is performed using a three-dimensional criterion. However, if we choose two-dimensional space and we do exactly the same operation, a very different result is obtained. Now we'll find that along the whole length of our tooth the central cavity is removed. And that is because it has defined a pore simply on a two-dimensional basis on a slice by slice and to qualify as a pore the volume of black pixels only has to be surrounded by white pixels on the uh, current cross-section. So what we have now is the region of interest represents the outer boundary of the tooth and the image represents the tooth but with the pores intact. Now we can now perform another one of the bitwise operations to allow us to actually binarize the, uh, the pulp cavity while retaining the region of interest defined by the tooth's outer boundary. We run bitwise operations and we choose the operation called XOR. XOR. This means uh, an exclusive OR. Essentially it finds differences. It means that the, the pixels that would be binarized as white are the pixels which are different between the image and the ROI. In this case the only pixels different between the image and the ROI are the pulp cavity uh, regions. Everything else is the same. So if we run the operation, we will finish up with the pulp canal binarized, and but nothing else included in the binarization. So this is, represents a method by which we can binarize the pulp cavity and retain the outer boundary of the tooth as the region of interest. This allows us, for example, to calculate parameters of the pulp cavity. If I were now to open 3D analysis, then if I ran these calculations, I would be able to calculate the volume of the pulp cavity as a proportion or a percent of the total VOI volume. Now, any series of operations that we do here can be uh, cr implemented into a task list. What you do is you choose any operations under the internal tab. The internal tab uh, is the second out of the four tabs at the custom processing page. Any operation that you choose, you click on plus, and that is added to the end of the task list. Now I'm going to clear the task list and previously saved the list of operations that we just looked at. There exists an import and an export button. I'm clicking on import and going to the binarized pulp canals task list, I can load the list of operations that we've just carried out. We started by thresholding to 37 to binarize the pulp cavity and the uh, and uh, and and the rest of the tooth. 
Then we performed a morphological operation, opening, to remove some of the uh, loose objects in the pulp cavity. Then under despeckle we ran sweep to remove any disconnected objects. Then we ran the bitwise operation to make the region of interest a copy of the image. We ran another despeckle, this time removing pores in 2D space from the region of interest to make the region of interest exclude the pore space in the middle. Then another bitwise operation using X or essentially binarized uh, exclusively the pulp canal in the center of the tooth. After this, we made another despeckle operation to remove any existing, uh, any remaining loose objects. If I go back to the beginning by clicking Restore Data Set, so that we have the uh, original grey level image and no region of interest, we can reiterate that series of operations by running the task list clicking on this button here. So those operations have now run in an automated sequence, uh, re-iterating uh, the same procedures that we've just looked at. And at the end we can see that the object, shown by this button here, image view, represents our pulp uh, cavity. And the region of interest, shown by this button here, is uh, basically just a binary mask of the outer boundary of the tooth. So we've got the result that we were aiming for. Now, we can implement a task list um, in a batch mode on multiple data sets by clicking on this batch manager data, uh, button here. That opens a separate window, which at the top has the same task list and internal list as in the uh, custom processing page, but underneath has an additional window for adding data sets. So I click on Add, and let's say we choose the same data set we've just looked at, add that, and optionally add an ROI to it as well, although in this case because the ROI is going to be automatically determined we don't require an ROI so we could run the operation like this. So any task list that you create can be operated either on a single data set from within custom processing or on multiple data sets using the batch manager.